Well, to talk about this is Robin Simcox, research fellow at the think tank, the Henry Jackson Society, and Asim Qureshi, research director for the prisoners campaign group, CAGE. Asim, first, whether or not the Britons who are travelling out to Syria see themselves as freedom fighters or not, the fact is that many hundreds of them are fighting alongside some pretty vicious extremists. Well, I mean, we don't know who they're fighting on alongside for a start. I mean, the th situation there is very, very complicated in terms of the groups. Nearly all of the groups that are out there right now use some kind of Islamic terminology, whether it's the name that they use to describe themselves or, um, you know, the, the objectives that they have themselves. It's, it's quite complicated to figure out, actually, who wants what. But the, re the reality is that these people are going out there for one reason alone, which is that they see people suffering and they want to go and help in that situation. But they're not just going to come back and sort of slot back into normal life, are they? They'd be traumatised, radicalised. Well, I, I would question that. Look, you know, we had almost 20 years of, of Mus British Muslims going off to fight in Afghanistan during the late 70s, the 80s, up until the 90s. Then they went to fight in Bosnia during the 90s as well. There was not a single case of anybody carrying out any kind of operation within the UK during that period of time. It was only after the invasions of Afghanistan and Iraq that people decided, some individuals decided, that they wanted to do something over here. But none of those people who come from that generation who ever thought about doing anything over here. And there's no reason to think, there's no empirical evidence to suggest that those who are going off to fight in Syria are going to come back and do the same thing. Well, except that there's 7,000 uh, foreign fighters, according to the latest American intelligence assessment. I mean, it's a fair bet that, you know, some of them are going to come back here and, and cause trouble. The authorities have got to be prepared for that. Well, you know, I, w I want to question exactly why this, is the, this debate has come up in the first place, because there are a lot of foreign fighters going over to Libya as well, and we didn't see anywhere near the same uh, questioning of their their motives when they were going out there. In fact, some of the people that the UK government claimed were LIFG, Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, while they were here in the UK and put them on deportation orders back to the Gaddafi's regime, that the British government is now currently working with them. In fact, one of the people that was on a control order here in the UK was the bo personal bodyguard of Hillary Clinton while she was out there. So the UK government has a very, very hypocritical policy when it comes to foreign fighters going aboard. With, with Libya, it, it, was, it was permitted, but for some reason for Syria now, where there isn't any kind of direct foreign policy need or desire, they're taking a, a very, very different approach. But so it, is, it is a criminal offence to go out and uh, fight no. abroad with an irregular army it, under the Terrorism Act 2005. I, 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 would, I would argue with that and say it's not. It's, it's a criminal offence to be involved in terrorism, yes, that's for sure. But to help a foreign army, I wouldn't uh, have that reading of the Terrorism Act. But the, you know, Al Qaeda is a very strong in Syria. The chances are that there are, you know, there's terrorism but going on there again, that they I could potentially how, bring. I don't know how strong Al Qaeda is in Syria. Yes, there are groups, and I'm, I, I wouldn't deny that. And I think any any British citizen who's going out there and who's joining up with Al Qaeda groups that they 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 really should join the main rebel forces that are trying to fight against the Syrian government. Okay, and obviously not to bring that back here then. Well, let's bring in Robin Simcox there. You saw that um, the, the, the Dutch soldier, Yilmaz, in Jonathan Rugman's report, talking about how he intended to go to Syria to die. He wasn't intending to bring terror home. Yeah, and I don't think there's anybody suggesting that everybody uh, from Europe or the West that goes across to Syria to fight in that conflict or to join that conflict is going to come back and commit terrorist acts. No one's suggesting that. But it can only have to, it's only a... Um, well, people are suggesting that. Well, I don't think anyone's suggesting that everybody is going to do so. It's just the, the, the fear is that the small minority, and it only takes a small minority to cause a big problem. Do you share that fear, though? Yes. So, do you, when you look at the images of the towns being flattened and so on, do you understand that British Muslims here want to do something about that? Absolutely. Thing? And no one in their right mind, I don't think, would support the Assad regime, the, the suffering that's going on in Syria is is dreadful and, and everyone accepts that. Um, but I think there has to be, the government has to uh, draw a line and say they has to apply the law. If people are going over there are, are deemed to be uh, contravening the terrorism acts, and I do think there'll be some difficulty in getting convictions on this. I do think it'll be difficult for them, then they have to, they can't just ignore that. But the rebels are fighting a war that the West, some say, were too, was too weak to get involved in. They're, they're fighting that war. They're, this is an issue of conscience for them. Well, I'm sure for some, but then there are definitely also those who have joined with some of the more extreme elements, the Al-Qaeda affiliates. Um, and I think as uh, the government, going back to the 80s and 90s, 
was extremely, um, the British governments were extremely uh, complacent about that threat, com extremely complacent about Brits going to, to fight and die in foreign lands. And, and I hope we just don't have that complacency again with Syria. Well, how is this any different, though, from the, the kind of action you've seen in the past in our, in our history, the Spanish Civil War, for example, Britain's going and getting involved in foreign wars. How is this any different? Well, I don't think there would be, I don't think there'd be a huge amount of concerns if 400 George Orwells came back. I think this is about the fact But how that, do you know that's not going to happen? Well, we can hope that happens, certainly, but I think it's just ext extremely unlikely, judging from past foreign conflicts. I mean, there's, it's not just Britain we're talking about. European countries have been threatened by terrorism. The Middle East, lots of people who fought in past conflicts, be it Afghanistan, Chechnya, Kashmir, Bosnia, Iraq, have gone to commit terrorist acts elsewhere. Well, you declined to debate this subject with Asim, but Asim, perhaps you have a comment on what you've just heard. Yeah, well, I mean, look, at the end of the day, people do go out to fight in different places. We know that you know, young Jewish boys and girls, they go and join the IDF and they actually take part in operations in the occupied territories. No one says that they're going to come back and commit human rights abuses here in the, in the UK in the same way. Why is it permitted for them? And why is there an assumption that somehow Muslims are more crazy and are going to do things? I mean, for, for me, what they're doing over there is extremely illegal and, you know, in, in some ways constitute war, war crimes, but yet those same kind of arguments aren't used against them. So why wouldn't the terrorism plaque then apply in that circumstance as well? Asim Qureshi, Robin Simcox, thank you very much for joining me. Well, do you think Britons who travelled to Syria are morally justified? You can go to our website, channel4.com news, and take part in our survey.